Parasternal long axis view. One starts an ultrasound examination of the heart by obtaining an image using the parasternal approach. The scanning plane is located along the longitudinal axis of the heart. One places the transducer perpendicular to the anterior thoracic wall in the left third or fourth intercostal space adjacent to the sternum. The scanning plane should follow an imaginary line that connects the apex and the middle part of the right clavicle. One can perform the examination in the supine position, but it is better to turn the patient on his or her left side. In the upper part of the screen, one will see the heart's structures that are situated more closely to the surface of the transducer. When one looks farther down the screen, one will see the image of the anterior right ventricular wall, more deeply, the interventricular septum, under the interventricular septum, the left ventricular cavity, where one can see the papillary muscles, chordae, and mitral valve leaflets. At the bottom of the screen, one sees the image of the posterior left ventricular wall. The interventricular septum directly continues into the anterior aortic wall and the anterior mitral valve leaflet continues into the posterior aortic wall. In the root of the aorta, one will see the motion of two aortic valve leaflets. The upper leaflet is always the right coronary leaflet of the aortic valve. The lower leaflet can be the left coronary or non-coronary leaflet of the aortic valve. Parasternal long axis view of the right ventricular inflow tract. After one has obtained the parasternal long axis view of the left ventricle, one can rotate the transducer a bit clockwise and angle it as if one is trying to look under the xiphoid process. In this image, one can see the position and motion of the tricuspid valve leaflets. Normal tricuspid valve leaflets open in the same manner as mitral valve leaflets. Double motion, open, close, open. Normal tricuspid valve leaflets should open like a door, so the tips of the tricuspid valve leaflets have the biggest amplitude. In the case of tricuspid stenosis, the leaflets dome in a diastole like a parachute. Doming is one of the main two-dimensional features of any stenotic valve. In this image, one can see the spot where the coronary sinus empties into the right atrium. This is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart between the right ventricle and the right atrium. Parasternal short axis views of the left ventricle. After one has obtained the parasternal long axis view of the left ventricle, one can rotate the transducer clockwise until the scanning plane is perpendicular to the long axis of the heart. After this step, one can sweep the transducer so that one is trying to look under the suprasternal notch or one can sweep downwards in the direction of the apex. In this way, one can obtain many cross-sectional images of the left ventricle. If the transducer is perpendicular to the anterior thoracic wall and the scanning plane is perpendicular to the long axis of the left ventricle, one will obtain the parasternal short axis view at the papillary muscles level. In this image, one can see aortic valve leaflets in the center of the root of the aorta. In closed position, the leaflets form the shape of the letter Y or the Mercedes logo. 
The right coronary cusp is on the top and near the right ventricular outflow tract. The non-coronary cusp is at the bottom and to the left, near the right atrium, and the left coronary cusp is at the bottom and to the right, near the left atrium. The segmental approach to analyzing regional ventricular function. Short axis views. Four views are used for regional wall analysis. The longitudinal and short axis examinations complement each other and give one the opportunity to look at essentially the same segments in more than one view. In longitudinal views, we divide the left ventricle into basal, middle, and apical thirds. The short axis at the mitral valve and papillary muscle levels are divided into six segments whereas the short axis at the apex has four segments. On this scheme, one can see the short axis at the mitral valve level. In this image, one can see six segments of the short axis at the mitral valve level, anterior, lateral, posterior, inferior, inferior basal septal, anterior basal septal. By using the apical approach, one gets the impression that the central part of the interatrial septum is absent. In this case, one should use the subcostal approach for optimal visualization of the interatrial septum. In an apical four-chamber examination, the scanning plane crosses the inferior segment of the interventricular septum. It is important to keep this aspect in mind when assessing the patient with coronary heart disease. In typical cases, the inferior segment of the interventricular septum receives blood flow from the right coronary artery or the circumflex artery, as opposed to other segments of the interventricular septum, which receive blood from the left descending coronary artery. During an apical four-chamber examination, one should evaluate whether the left ventricular walls contract uniformly. One must also assess the structure and motion of the mitral and tricuspid valves. This approach is ideal for Doppler recordings of blood flow through mitral and tricuspid valves because the Doppler ultrasonic beam is parallel to the direction of blood flow. When one is performing a Doppler recording of blood flow through the mitral orifice, one should place the sample volume at the tips of the mitral leaflets. This transmitral Doppler waveform allows us to assess the left ventricular diastolic function. In the presence of mitral regurgitation, one will register turbulent regurgitant flow in the systole. 